Okay, so now we're going to look at our index.html and what you've got here from line 38 to line 6. These are your internal styles. This is what we learned how to do that saved us so much time from doing inline styles on all these tags. And it is indeed a great time saver. But now we're going to learn a whole new way of doing things. And this is called external styles. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here. Let me close the directions and the images. So right below my index file, I'm going to right click and create a new file. I'm going to name this file style.css. You can name it anything. You can name it bob.css. You can name it anything you want, but I've named mine style.css. I know by the way it's indented the exact same amount as the index that it's inside my lab 6 folder. These styles, actually I'm not going to copy them, I'm going to cut them. Control X. I won't be needing these style tags anymore, but I'll leave them there just in case. And I'm going to paste them onto my style.css. So now here they all are. But you'll notice when you saw that go white, my index page does not have any of the styles anymore. Why? Because even though I have them on my style sheet, style.css, I haven't linked my style sheet to my index file. So let's do that first. Um, it's going to go between the head tags, and it's the link tag. It looks just like this. This is an empty container, so it doesn't need a closing tag. But the link tag by itself won't do anything. It needs an attribute. And the first attribute is the relative tag. And what I'm saying is, this is relative to style sheets. The second attribute will be the href tag, which you're familiar with, hypertext reference. And we want this to be linked to that. So I'll just start typing and it'll finish it for me because it recognizes that right there. Now, some people like to put their style sheets in their assets folder and they might have a whole folder called styles. If I had put my style sheet in my assets folder, you know I would need a path here that says assets, but I don't. I have it right beside my index so it doesn't need a path. I'm going to save this. Oops, I can see an S there that doesn't belong. There we go. And now my styles are all back on. So what's so great about using style sheets, external style sheets? If you have another page of your website, and right now I have this French one. I'm going to open this. There it is. Let's leave it in French so you can see what it looks like. If I want this to have the same styles as this, all I have to do is attach my style sheet. So I'll go to the index, I'll copy this, and I'll paste it here. Save. And now when I go to the French one, it's got the same styles. So that's one of the big reasons we use style sheets, external style sheets. I want to teach you one more concept in this video, and it's the concept of having your website look the same on every browser. I'll be able to show this to you by using the Inspect tool, which I think I've shown you before. Right click and go to Inspect. So. As I open up these things here, you'll see all the different parts of this website. And you see how they're highlighted. They have a blue part and an orange part and a green part on some of them. Um, the blue part is the element. The blue part highlights the element. The green part 
is the padding and the orange part is the margins. So what I want to point out to you is if I hover over the body here, you'll see a margin of, I don't know how much that is, maybe it's two or three pixels all the way around the body. I did not put that there. Did you put it there? No, none of us did. So let's just look at that margin. What's it doing? It's keeping things from being dead up to the edge. I'm on Chrome right now, and the Chrome browser added that without me asking. Firefox adds a different amount. Microsoft Edge adds a different amount. What I'd like to know is that when in, anytime anyone views my website, they'll see the same thing. If I want a margin there, I'll put it in. And the way to do that, now I'm going to take us to another website. I'm going to just Google normal eyes style sheet. So let's see, normalize. I'm going to download this normalized style sheet. And the minute I save it, it'll give me the opportunity to put this in my folder. So that's what I'm going to do. Summer. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh, we are on week six. Is that right? Lab six, I believe. And now, if you look over here, there it is. So I'm going to just copy this, Control-C, Control-V, and instead of style.css, I'm going to change this one to normalize.css. Let me save, and let's take a peek. I didn't put it on the French one, but here it is. Oh, I think I just added this to the French one, yes. Well, I'll just copy this and put it on my index. Save, and now, now you can see that margin is gone. If I inspect it, you'll see as I hover over the body, that orange margin is gone. So any normalized takes away a lot of other things too. If you look uh, carefully at this, if you try to, you can see it removes the margin in all browsers. It renders the main element consistently in Internet Explorer. It just does a lot of things. It's a little bit hacky. I don't really love what it does, but for now, I think it's a wise choice.